Hello everybody who wants to learn Russian language, you are in the right place here on my channel Russian teacher Veronica and today I prepared a new Russian lesson for you. Today we will learn at least five new ways how to say cold in Russian language. You know that Russia is quite cold country depending on the area, depending on the region. But right now, when I film in Moscow, it is plus eight, but it is quite windy and that's why it is quite cold. Let me know what is the temperature in your country right now when you watch this Russian lesson. And now let's learn these five alternatives, how to say cold in Russian language. And uh, Let's start from the basics. If you want to say it is cold, you just say холодно. Холодно. Right? And here you, if you are a beginner, of course, you can ask me what's the problem? Why do I see? Why do I write о, о and о, хо, ло, дно, but I or Russian native speakers pronounce this word as why O transforms into A? The answer is here and it is quite easy. We have famous Russian reduction in the Russian language and O unstressed in a weak position without stress we pronounce like A. That's why we write HOLODNO but we say HOLODNO HOLODNO and uh, if you want to say outside is cold, normally Russian native speakers would say на улице холодно. На улице холодно. The literal translation of this Russian sentence is in the street it is cold. But here for example if I live even at my dacha we do not have streets there it's a very small um, village, not even village, it's less than a village. It has only like 20 houses there. So we do not have a street there, but we still say на улице холодно. Here, на улице, it means only outside. Okay, now you know everything and we can move on to alternatives in Russian language. And the alternative number one when it is really, really cold, frosty, you can say мороз, мороз. You can say на улице мороз. Or you can say там мороз. Yes. And here мороз, it is that famous grandfather frost that many Russian students know already. Um, it's something like Santa Claus, but in Russian reality, in Slavic reality. Grandfather Frost, in Russian it is Дедушка Мороз. Дедушка Мороз. Don't forget about Russian reduction here. Мороз. The stress is on the last syllable. That's why first O we pronounce like A. Don't forget about another very interesting Russian phonetic thing, which is the voicing. So, Z. In the end of Russian sound, sentence, sorry, in the end of the Russian word, you should pronounce like S. So we write MOROZ, but we say MAROZ, MAROZ. Okay, this was the alternative number one for really frosty and cold weather. MAROZ, NA ulice MAROZ, TAM MAROZ. Okay, okay. Another alternative is more on the slang side. So you cannot use it with people who are much older than you or if you want to show them respect, if you talk to a policeman, to a doctor, to your director. Depending on the degree of warmth in your relationship, it is, if it is your friend, or relative, mother, father, husband, wife, you can use this word without any problem. And this is the word холодрига. Холодрига. It's quite a funny word. 
Haladrigan, right? Um, and it means really, really cold. So if you look uh, through the window and you see there is a lot of snow, all white, and it is really cold, you can say, Боже мой, какая холодрыга! Боже мой, какая холодрыга! This word холодрыга is quite emotional. So when you say this, you want to emphasize, to show it is really cold and I'm maybe uncomfortable with this low temperature, something like that. And the alternative number three is again on the slang side and this is the word dubak. Dubak. Yes, very slang word by the way. It is not bad. It is not a swear word. It is nothing bad, but it is just very slang. So be careful when you use it when you talk to unknown people. For example, you can say something like that. Мы вышли на прогулку и сразу вернулись. Там дубак. Мы вышли на прогулку и сразу вернулись. Там дубак. Here, if we talk about etymology, uh, dubak is quite an interesting word because we have the word dub. Dub, it is oak tree. We have quite a lot of them in different regions. In Russia, for example, in the area where I live, we have many, many, many oak trees and I love them because they are beautiful. And traditionally, from this type of wood, in old times, many coffins were made of and uh, literally dubak as I understand from etymological um, dictionary, it means it is that cold that you can really... <laughs> yes, I don't know if this verb I can use in English or not. I'm afraid of censorship, so I tried to show it. I hope you understand my idea. Okay, so now you know three alternatives. You can say Maros, Haladriga and Dubak. Another alternative is quite funny, so you can say Holod Sabachi. Holod Sabachi. Again, this is more on the slang side, so be very careful when you use this alternative. And um, um, yes, another thing that you should know about is that in Russian language, normally we like to use preposition if we talk about adjective plus noun construction. So we say красивая девушка, маленькая собака, милый котенок. But here in this expression we use past position. So you say not собачий холод. You say холод собачий. And literally it means doggy cold or dog cold, I don't know how you can really translate it into English. And we have such a proverb or a saying in the modern Russian language and it sounds like в такую погоду добрый хозяин собаку не выгонит. В такую погоду добрый хозяин собаку не выгонит. Because normally dogs are supposed in villages to at least to live outside and to guard the house and the territory, right? So they live in their dog house outside. But when it is really cold and frosty or um, it's um, uncomfortable, rainy weather, um, a nice lord of the dog, how you say, хозяин, I don't know, he would not let this dog outside. He will care about her and he will live her in a warm place inside the house, right? So I think that Holod Sabachi is somehow corresponded, correlated to this saying in Russian language. Literally, Holod Sabachi, it means it is really, really, really cold. So if you are tired of this low temperature, you can say, Как же надоел этот холод собачий? 
Как же надоел этот холод собачий. That's it. And now let's talk um, how you can a little bit emphasize your emotions when you speak Russian. It is important. Well, if you don't want, you can always say очень холодно. Очень холодно. But even if you don't use these alternatives, you need to understand them when Russian native speakers talk between themselves or with you. It will um, make you more confident, right? It will improve your comprehension skills in Russian language. So you can say очень холодно, but Russian people also can say адски холодно. Адски холодно, it means hell cold. And it's super funny because it is supposed to be very hot, right? In hell, but we have this expression in Russian, адски холодно. By the way, this construction, not construction, combination of d and s in Russian, very often we pronounce like ts, адски холодно. Not адски, but адски. Okay, another, you can say дико холодно, дико холодно, it means wildly cold, yeah, like really cold, or you can say ужасно холодно, ужасно холодно, or for example, жутко холодно, жутко холодно, okay, um, and also you can use a verb if you are freezing, you can use the verb мёрзнуть, imperfective, or замёрзнуть, perfective. Мёрзнуть, замёрзнуть. So you can say Они сильно замёрзли при восхождении на гору. Они сильно замёрзли при восхождении на гору. That's this is everything what I wanted to discuss during this Russian lesson and I have two more things to mention here. If you want to learn Russian together with me, this is absolutely possible. I mean online lessons via Zoom platform. If you want to learn Russian with me, here is my personal business email right here. We will discuss prices, payment, program, Mm, your wishes, your level, all that stuff. I'm waiting for new Russian students. Many thanks for everybody, mm, to everybody who still learned Russian with me, to my old and new students. I'm very glad that you chose me as your Russian teacher. It's such an honor for me. And also, of course, I wanted to say a huge big thank you to my constant supporters, their names are right here. Many thanks for everything that you did for my channel. And if you personally also want to support my channel financially, this is important. Um, you will find the link below this video. Um, just follow this link and find the field how you can support my channel financially. Many thanks for everybody who writes comments who hit the, hits the like button and uh, subscribes to my channel. All this activity is precious and it helps my channel to grow. You know, it is not the best time for <laughs> channels about Russia and uh, Russian language. So each activity, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, write me a comment or send financial help to my channel is really really precious and important many thanks for everything that you do to my channel and to me personally see you very soon увидимся скоро пока пока bye bye thanks for watching